Welcome to the Choose SolidWorks screencast series. My name is Neil Cook, Product Marketing Manager at SolidWorks. You know there's no doubt that creating designs in 3D saves a lot of time and reduces errors, but at the end of the day, you still need to convey your design ideas to the shop floor. There's no getting away from that trusted and universally understood manufacturing drawing. After all, it gives you the freedom to express as much information as you need to clearly communicate your designs. At SOLIDWORKS, we understand that users must still create production drawings, so we've made this process as quick and as painless as possible by providing some fantastic drawing productivity tools. This can make a big difference to the way you work, and that's what this screencast series is all about. Are you confident you can make drawings to the high standards you expect? Do lead times suffer because it takes too long to detail and check your designs? And do you compromise on drawing quality just to get the drawing out of the door? With SOLIDWORKS you can significantly reduce the amount of time spent creating and annotating drawings. Create highly detailed and accurate drawings of complex parts or massive assemblies with ease and be confident that drawings update as expected when design changes happen, leaving you more time to concentrate on your designs and get them to manufacturing faster. And all this in one consistent and easy to use interface. With SOLIDWORKS, detailed drawings are done, fast. A 3D model of your design conveys everything, how it looks, how it works, how much it weighs, but one thing it doesn't do so easily is tell you how to make it. For that we need a drawing. So how can we get from this beautiful 3D model to a flat 2D drawing in the fastest possible time? Well, let's take a look. The view palette shows the available views of the model, so you don't have to guess which is the front view or side view and your working area is not hidden by a huge dialog box. Just drag a view onto the sheet and further views are projected automatically. Of course one benefit of working with a 3D model is the isometric view, which can also be shaded to add further clarity. This particular design requires an auxiliary view, so we can detail the features on the angled face. Although this view is in the correct orientation, you may wish to use a little draftsman's license to make it clearer. You can see that SOLIDWORKS gives you the flexibility to create as many different views of your design as you need and with very little effort. The same goes for section views. Planar, staggered, aligned or broken out cross sections are created by simply drawing the section lines on the part and placing the view. You can even remove the fillet lines to make it that much clearer. When this part was created, dimensions were added to drive the 3D model. Well, these can be reused to save time by picking a feature to display its dimensions. However, some dimensions specify design intent rather than manufacturing information, so we can hide those to avoid confusion. Another advantage of using these model dimensions is that we can make changes here in the drawing and see what effect they have on the design. Perfect for design reviews or when a customer has sent back a marked up e-drawing. With SOLIDWORKS you make the design change where it most makes sense and the effect of any changes can be seen immediately. Some dimensions may detail features which can't be seen in a view because maybe some other feature is obscuring it, or maybe it would just be easier to read if it was shown on another view. This is easily fixed, just drag it over to a view where the feature can be clearly seen and move it around until it looks right. The dimensions for the axes of the gear shafts may look better on this view, so we'll show the axes and again just drag the dimensions over and tidy them up. This saves an enormous amount of time deleting and recreating annotations. Any tolerances, geometric tolerances or surface finish symbols added to the 3D model can be shown on the drawing. A subset of the dimension properties over on the left side of the screen pops up in the dimension palette for quick edits. Tolerance type, sizes and text notes can all be changed here. It also remembers your last few edits so you can recall them instantly and helps you to adhere to predefined company standards. Changes to these tolerances are reflected back in the model so all design information is always up to date wherever it's used.
there are times when you'll need to add your own dimensions. Picking Geometry displays the Rapid Dimension Manipulator which places the dimension either side of the drawing view. This means less mouse travel and less picks but it also means that we can dimension features without having to zoom out to place the dimensions, knowing that they'll be in the right place. This tool makes such a difference that it's definitely worth seeing again. As we add dimensions, existing dimensions move out of the way to make room for new ones and move back again if a dimension is deleted. How much time would that alone save? We'll use the dimension palette to make this a reference dimension and finish off the detail of the angled bore. And of course because we're dimensioning a 3D model, SOLIDWORKS knows which entities are diameters. Once the style of a dimension or its tolerance information has been set, you can use the Format Painter to quickly paste the style onto another. Selecting multiple dimensions shows extra alignment options on the dimension palette to space them out evenly. Perhaps a detail view might be needed to show some small features. Drawing a circle defines the view but this is easily modified later. Like everything in SOLIDWORKS, the preview updates dynamically so you know exactly what you're going to get. The existing dimensions can be moved into this new view or we can create new ones. Remember, what we're actually dimensioning here is the 3D model, so we don't need to worry about the scale of the view. SOLIDWORKS takes care of that. And now the drawing is really starting to take shape. If this model was imported from another CAD system, or the feature dimensions are different from what we need for manufacturing, we can speed things up even more by using the DIM expert. This recognises features like patterns of holes and dimensions them intelligently saving an enormous amount of work. We can mix and match which dimensions to use, model dimensions, rapid dimensions or DIM expert dimensions, giving us the speed and flexibility to get the drawing done fast. Now before everyone starts writing in, I know there are still a couple of dimensions missing from this drawing. There is no substitute for checking a drawing by hand before sign off, but we do have tools like the spell checker, design checker and drawing compare tools to make this process faster, but we'll save those for another screencast. Finally, no drawing is complete without notes and title blocks. SOLIDWORKS uses familiar text formatting tools to make notes appear exactly as you want them and lets you include things like custom properties, surface finish or geometric tolerance symbols or even hyperlinks. If you have standard notes, you can put them in the design library and then build up custom notes line by line as and when you need them. The title block is probably the most important part of the drawing. SOLIDWORKS has made sure that the title block is correct by filling out the fields with information from the model. The title block shows which fields can be edited and all edits are written back to the model to ensure that all design information is always up to date wherever it's used. And there's our drawing, simple and fast. Some industries are trying to move away from the reliance on paper drawings, adding 3D PMI or product and manufacturing information directly to the model. This mainly consists of dimensions and geometric tolerances but can include any information which assists in manufacture or inspection. We've already seen the DIM expert in action on a 2D drawing. On a 3D model it can automatically add GD&T information based on some predefined rules. Of course, once these dimensions are on the model, they can be easily shown in the drawing. You could spend just as much time adding dimensions to the model as you could to a drawing, but SOLIDWORKS has again added some great productivity tools to get you to the finished result faster than ever before. Finally, let's take a brief look at assembly drawings. SOLIDWORKS can produce very detailed drawings of assemblies including isometric section views and alternate position views showing mechanism movement. But one of the best ways to clarify how an assembly goes together is the exploded view. In this isometric view, the parts aren't spaced out enough, but we are working with the 3D model, 
so we can sort this out right here, without having to go back and edit the assembly. We just need to rotate it to a good view, save it, and then apply it to this drawing view. Job done. No exploded assembly drawing is complete without a bill of materials table and balloons. The table can have as much or as little information as you want to show, with all the data taken directly from the individual part models. You can also edit this table, and like the title block, the information is written back to the model. For balloons, SOLIDWORKS has yet another labour saving device. Different layouts can be previewed and as you move the balloons around they resort themselves so that the leaders don't cross. A little tidying up and the drawing is done, fast. I hope you've enjoyed this quick tour of the drawing productivity tools in SOLIDWORKS. We strive to deliver simple but effective tools to help you focus on making your designs, not fighting with the CAD tool and to make it an enjoyable experience too. We want you to look forward to using the product at the start of the day and value its role at the end of the day. For more information and to see other screencasts in this series, please go to www.solidworks.com forward slash choose or contact your local SOLIDWORKS reseller. My name is Neil Cook, thank you for watching.